side. There's a lot more to reversing heart disease than just taking natto. Now, True. you got to find out first what kind of issues you have because everyone is different. That's one of the things we want to stress is that everybody's individual. So you can't take a one approach and attach it to everyone. So what we always do when we first, you know, look at somebody, you ask, what kind of family history do you have? Exactly. Um, you know, people worry about cholesterol. You know, that's the only thing that tends to be looked at medically sometimes on risk factors for cardiac is cholesterol. It is a tiny piece of the puzzle, and sometimes it isn't a problem. So well, when you think yeah. that 50% of the people that have a heart attack have normal cholesterol. So, okay, yeah. not everything, is it? No. So there's a lot of more issues other than that when it comes to cardiac risk. So the first thing you do, family history. If you know that every person in somebody's family drops dead at 40, okay, there's a problem. So there is something underlying. There's something there that is actually doing that to, to their family. So that's why you have to start looking at risk factors. Now, if somebody says, okay, well, yeah, I have high cholesterol and there's no one that's ever had a heart attack. It actually, everybody lives till they're 95. That might not be as much of a genetic risk. No, because we actually have families mm -hmm. like that where we do. everybody in the family has you know, cholesterol 350 or greater. And yet, you know, grandmother's still alive at 97, 98. Daughters like 70 something. Granddaughters right on down to the infants. And, you know, and everybody has high cholesterol. And yet none of them have cardiovascular disease. So that's where it gets into doing some lab work. Yes. And when you start looking at the lab work, there's a lot of things to look at to see, okay, are you at risk? And we actually don't check just cholesterol. We do something called an NMR. And so it is like a MRI of the blood where it actually looks at your particles. So it looks at the particles. It can tell if you have the big fluffy kind of cholesterol. Do you have the little bitty dense ones that cause problems? Um, do you have protective HDLs? Just because you have high HDLs does not protect you always either. And that's one of those myths that's been out there. And there's more and more, as most of y'all have seen, that's coming out in the media of HDLs are not always protective. Right. So that's how you know is to do the lab work needed to see. Yeah, you know, that, that NMR, you know, when we look at that, we, we get to look. And I know you've probably seen other videos because there's other people out there, Atia and all those other guys talking about Oh, APOB. Yeah, okay. APOB is kind of important. When you look at the, and you can measure the APOB, but if you look at the NMR, what you actually get is the actual number of particles. And every particle has an APOB. So you're looking at that. If you've got a really high uh, particle count, you know your APOB is high. And now it's about, okay, what are we going to do to change that? That's the key. Yes. So that is one factor. When you start looking at that, then, okay, say LDL, which everybody knows is the bad cholesterol is what everybody calls it. We only got um, one kind not, of, It's not always bad. Like he said, we have one kind of cholesterol. They just all have a little bit different well, functions. we got different carriers. Yes. That's the key. We've got different carriers. We've got LDL, or low-density carrier, and a high-density carrier. And one kind of takes cholesterol from the liver and so on out into the tissues. And then the other one supposedly does the reverse cholesterol transport or picks it up, takes it back to the liver once it's been used. Mm -hmm. That's what HDL does. And on the NMR, you also get, of course, your triglycerides, which everybody knows about triglycerides. And for some reason, people don't tend to worry about their triglycerides as much as they do about their cholesterol. Well, triglycerides are probably one of the biggest risk factors that we see in cardiovascular disease. And when you look at triglycerides, what makes triglycerides high? Diet. Now, cholesterol is based a lot on genetics, no doubt. Diet does have a big Diet, part. And, and trig triglycerides do too, because if everybody in your family has them high, it's partly genetic, but it's also you can change that by what you eat. So there is no doubt triglycerides are affected really highly by diet. So when you get high triglycerides, Almost everybody with high triglycerides have high particles. Mm -hmm. So that is part of the problem. It takes a particle to carry those triglycerides. Exactly. And then the NMR gives you an insulin resistance score. And the insulin resistance score takes every bit of information they have. And there's a lot actually information in the background of that test than you actually get seen. But they take all that information and make you an insulin resistance score. How insulin resistant are you? The more insulin resistant you are, the bigger the cardiac risk. 
And when it comes down to it, insulin resistance is one of the biggest cardiac risks. Yeah, you see a lot of the uh, YouTube, other people, other doctors and so on talking on YouTube about the biggest problem with cardiovascular disease is either diabetes or prediabetes, right. which is, of course, she's talking about insulin resistance equals prediabetes, diabetes, and so on. Right. So that's kind of where we're headed. You know, one of the key factors, you know, when you look at that NMR and talking about your triglycerides, mm -hmm. <clears throat> one of the... Let's say one of the biggest risk predictors that has come out in the past four or five years uh, from uh, people that study lipids, they're called lipidologists, okay? And those guys and gals have come up with it. one of the biggest risk factors is that triglyceride HDL ratio. Not your LDL, but your, H, your HDL triglyceride ratio. And what they do is take your triglycerides and divide into it your, your HDLs. Now, if you've got a sky high, like I had one yesterday, sky high triglycerides, really low HDLs, risk factor was off the chart. They want it three or less. So you could just pull up, you know, maybe you've had your, your lipids done recently. Go pull it up and look at it. See what your triglycerides were. See where your cholesterol, uh, your HDL cholesterol is. Now, if that HDL says 50 and your triglycerides are 60, you got a good ratio. It's three or less. Now, if your triglycerides are 500 and your HDL is 50, that's a 10 to 1. And it's not good. Not good at all. So and we do see that And quite we a see bit. that too, more than we'd like, yeah. And there are things when it look when you, we, then you're getting into, okay, what can change it? Um, you know, NMR, we do them all the time. We've done them for years. It is not the standard now in medicine, mostly because insurance companies don't want to cover it. Um, but we have done it for years because it gives you more information. Now, when you see these patterns, definitely if you have an insulin resistance pattern, diet change is number one. Have to change your diet. Got to do it. Most people, they, there's not just a quick fix on a pill. You have to change your diet. Now, you, a lot of people need help, though. They still need to do some things to actually help lower it. Your EPA, which is part of what you see in fish oil, mm -hmm. is one of the things that can lower triglycerides. One of the problems we see out there, people don't take enough of it. Exactly. They go by a very low strength fish oil um, with a little bit, of, little bitty bit of EPA, and that doesn't do it. It takes a pretty decent dose of EPA to lower triglycerides. Now, depending on how high the triglycerides are, when you just get a little bit high, little bit high triglycerides, our omega three extra strength that we use all the time and we'll use two twice a day, it's high enough to do it. Now, when you look at it on the EPA, it's going to give you for the four pills, it's going to give you eighteen hundred milligrams. When you get someone that's up there, three, four, five hundred or more on triglycerides, it takes a higher amount. So we do have an EPA only fish oil. And that one does wonders for triglycerides. Not the cheapest fish oil out there, but it does work. And you no. don't want to have to take 30, 40 pills of something else. So on that one, we use usually three a day and each one of them is 1200. So that gives you 3600 EPA a day, which is a really high dose. Huge difference in helping control triglycerides. People don't realize how much difference that can make. It's huge. Yes. It really is. And people come in and say, well, I take fish oil. Well, where did you get it? And it's in one of the big box stores. And I mean, if you look, they're getting 180 EPA a day. That is not going to touch a high triglyceride, not even a little bit. So it dosing makes a difference. I said, yeah, if you're taking fish oil just for you have no problems and just for overall health and you don't have high triglycerides, that's fine. But if you're trying to treat a problem, you've got to go to therapeutic dosing. And that's what we see many people out there don't do. So if you're really interested in actually reversing heart disease, you have to get the right thing. And that even takes you into, okay, we're talking about fish oil. Let's talk about omegas. Yes. We have something called an omega check. It's a test that we do. And, yep. and it's, it's what's really scary. Over the years, mm -hmm. I have people, and we've done this omega check, because it's going to check your omega-6s, omega-3s, et cetera, et cetera. And I've had people say, well, I've been taking omega-3s for years. Mine's going to be great. I just smile. I say, okay, we'll see. Sure enough, it comes back, and, and it's like, they can't believe it. I don't have a good ratio. I, I, should, I take more omega-3 than that. Yeah, but you're eating way too many omega-6s. That's the key. Way too many. And when we're on these omega-6s, Everybody talks about omega six as being so bad. Well, we gotta have them. Like I say, if they're arachidonic acid, if you don't have arachidonic acid, 
You can't make your inflammatory process, and that's part of living. It's part of healing, even. So you got to have it. But the problem with these typical omega sixes that most people are eating, your seed oils, they're the PUFAs, the polyunsaturated fatty acids. Everybody tells you corn oil. It's so good for your heart. Bull. <laughs> yeah. It, right. it, okay. Here's the problem with with PUFAs. Okay. PUFAs are highly oxidatable. They turn into oxidative problems quickly. Now, the monosaturated, for instance, like your olive oil, not so much. Like your lard from bacon, doesn't. It's very stable. Doesn't oxidize hardly at all. So the stuff that oxidizes is those omega-6s that we get way too much of in the diet. So when we're going to change our diet, because a, t- a thousand times I've asked patients, mm-hmm. so I said, well, you, you, you know you had this problem. What did they tell you to do about it? They're talking about your other physicians, your primary care, or whoever. And they said, well, they told me to change my diet. Well, did they tell you how to change your diet? Well, no, they just told me to change it. Oh, okay. So what are you doing? They don't know. They're just lost. And that's where it gets into right. all these details about... About the different oils. The oils, and things like that, and fats. when we check people, there is no doubt... Almost everybody is higher in omega sixes. Always, always. Now, the only people that we see that have enough omega three to make their ratios correct are people that take high doses. Of, high doses. High doses official. We see people that take the one a day and the low strength. Never do they have enough omega three when we do a mega check. And people that don't take it at all, I have never once had someone that we did the test on that had normal omega threes that didn't supplement omega-3s. True. Because the American diet is very low in omega-3s. Very it's, low. It's so high in all those PUFAs. It's very high in 6, because you get it in all the vegetable oils. Well, I, the seed oil, stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, they, so you get... They a, call a corn oil a vegetable. Well, corn's really It's really a grain, not a vegetable. It's a grain, right. Exactly. Needless to say... Just and canola is just... That's well, one you really don't want. Um, look at the story. I always kind of tell people, get, go look at the story of canola oil. It was actually... Back in World War II, they used it as engine oil for, for motors and stuff like in ships and things like that because they didn't have enough petroleum to go around. They had to make diesel fuel and stuff out of that. So they actually that's where it actually started. Uh, and then you want to eat it. And I think the biggest uh, oxymoron I've seen is organic canola oil. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't even go there. It's That's another video. So anyway, on the omega check, you do look at the omega threes, but you also look at: Do you have enough EPA? Do you have enough DHA? Do mm-hmm. you have enough DPA? So there's actually fractions of those, and the same thing with omega sixes. So and then it looks at your ratio, and it tells you your risk associated with cardiac disease due to your three and six ratios. So that's another test that we do a lot. He just mentioned a minute ago about the oils being oxidized. That's one of the things that's been shown to be huge predictor of cardiovascular disease is oxidized LDL. Yeah, because when they've they've taken samples of blocked arteries out of cadavers, dead people, people that they've done bypass surgery on and so on, and they've analyzed and said, okay, what, what's what's in here? What what is this stuff? And it's all oxidized cholesterol. You know, that's the that's the problem. When when you look at something back to your chemistry. If it's a, an esterified uh, uh, standard, you know, uh, cholesterol, it's not. It's very stable. It's not oxidized at all. It doesn't have a free radical with it, so it's not seeking another electron at all. It's very stable. Now, once you oxidize it, it's got an electron that needs to be satisfied. It's got some stuff that needs to be done to it, so it's going to be very sticky. And cholesterol is constantly going in and out of our arteries and veins. And other tissues too. But if it's oxidized, it goes in, ah, kind of gets stuck. And next thing you know, here's some more. Oh, if it's oxidized, it gets stuck too. Now we have this sticky stuff, which attracts more stuff. Next thing you know, you got the monocytes coming yep. in, you got the foam cells. Now you've got yourself a cardiovascular plaque. And the one oil that's been shown to make foam cells better than any is soybean oil. Yes. So look at packaged processed food. You got soybean oil and everything. Don't eat it. If you do have risk for cardiovascular disease, that's one thing to definitely stay away from. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we have the NMR, we have the Omega Check, we have oxidized LDL. We're getting there. That's all things you need to see for your risk of cardiovascular disease. Now, there's also something called homocysteine. Now, homocysteine, 
Well, block an artery quicker than cholesterol ever thought about. It yeah. is actually very damaging to the inside lining of the arteries. And so anytime you have things that are damaging and you prick up all the inside of the arteries, the body's got to lay down stuff to kind of protect it. And homocysteine is very damaging to the arteries. It is. You know, when you look at homocysteine, mm-hmm. if you look at a model, and you've probably seen those little stick bottles of compounds, uh, it's got the little white balls, red balls, and all that stuff. <clears throat> and it's kind of neat because you can see all those little red balls and stuff hang on there. Those are potential of free electrons, and they have to be, there's the what's going to be sticky, they're what's going to actually poke into something, because they're mm-hmm. trying to steal an electron to make themselves whole again. Now, homocysteine is a byproduct of, of metabolism. Yes, everybody so has some. You're, if you're alive and breathing, you make homocysteine. Our body normally changes homocysteine, and it makes it into something inert called methionine. But it has to have the methylation process, which and I, you probably have read a little bit about methylation, We've done videos and stuff on that before Mm -hmm. in the past about methylation, how it works. Because if you don't have that methylation stuff working correctly, you're going to have problems with homocysteine. And the more homocysteine you got, the more damage you do to an artery. Yes. Then here comes that oxidized LDL. It goes in there. It's sticky. The next thing you know, you get yourself a real mess. And homocysteine is definitely genetics. Um, It does run in families. So when you see families that have a lot of problems... And they all have normal cholesterol, but they all have heart attacks. They're, and they're probably all got high homocysteine because you can have genetic mutations and there's more than one. There's many mutations mm. on the genes and you can have whole shows on just genetics. But that increases your risk for being not being able to change homocysteine into methionine. Correct. Simple supplements could actually help you with that process. Mm-hmm. We have something called Methylcore always helps convert you know, homocysteine and methionine. So, but it's a big risk factor. If you don't ever check that level, you don't know if you need it. Not everybody out there does. So yes, we always use NATO in cardiovascular um, problems and always. helping reverse heart disease. We always use NATO. We don't always use methylcore because not everybody needs it. It all depends on you. Some people's are horrible and some people's, they have a huge cardiac risk in other areas. They don't have that one. So that's why we always stress the more information you know, the more that you can do to actually help reverse your cardiovascular disease. And when it, okay, some people, homocysteine. Yes, genetics. Really, the people that are the highest tend to be genetic. Although sometimes just a severe B12 and methylfol- and a folate deficiency can make high homocysteine because those are some of the things that help reduce homocysteine. So another reason we always check B12, we always check folate. You know, you always want to get a really good picture of overall health. Yes. And, you know, we get, we've had a lot of, uh, let's say, a lot, of, a lot of comments, a lot of people watching our video on natokinase and reversing heart disease. <clears throat> and we thought we'd take a, a step further because a lot of these people call up and say, well, you know, I want to take natto. How much natto do I need to take? Well, it depends. Okay. There, there's a lot that gets into that. And mm-hmm. then we start talking about, well, what, what is your... You know, what is your omega-3 content? What is your homocysteine? Well, I don't know. What is your yep. C-reactive protein? Oh, yeah, there's another one. That's an inflammatory marker, really big in, in uh, cardiovascular health. So we start looking at all these things, and then we say, okay, this is that amount of nanokinase you're going to have to take to help you with that. And at the same time, you've got to fix that homocysteine problem if you've got one. You got to lower that cardiovascular mm-hmm. risk through that inflammatory process, like C reactive, C reactive protein. Get that nice and low. All these risk factors, have, you don't have to put out, it's like whack a mole. Everything can kind of pop themselves up. You have to push them back down. Mm-hmm. Whatever it happens to be popping up, you got to push it back down. So it's not just as simple as let me take a couple of natto a day and I'm going to reverse my heart disease. That's part of the process, but it's not the whole process. Right. And we get people that every day that think that they've been told you can't help it. Yes. And so they feel worthless. And even us talking about a lot of this, that sounds probably, I mean, like Greek. Um, <laughs> you probably think, oh my gosh, I can't help all that. You can. Yeah, you can. And that's what we're here for. Yeah. We actually help you navigate what you need to do in order to re- reduce your risk and reverse any problems that may be there. And it does take exercise, diet change, it takes knowing your risk factors. It takes sometimes supplementation to bring down certain things. If you have extreme oxida- you know, oxidized LDLs, 
you know as a whole you probably have oxidative stress in your body so you don't have enough antioxidants so it's all there's a lot of different things to it but you can put it all together and you can because we have people that come in and there's a mess when we first look at them mm -hmm. i mean everything is off and they can't believe that everything then later they can have perfect lab work so but you can there are ways that you can change that and we use different things you know it, in some instances for the cholesterol, we'll use the red rice yeast extract. Some instances we don't. On oxidized LDL, we have a multitude of things that we can use. Um, you know, we'll use our green tea max. We'll use, you know. Which is, some, which is a real high strength yep, green tea Carnitine. Mm -hmm. um, quercetin. The quercetin. You yeah. can use, I mean, there's so many of the antioxidants. Berberine. Resveratrol, berberine. There's all, especially if you're insulin resistant. Yes. And definitely methylcore if you have the high homocysteine. We use SPM if you have the high C-reactive protein. And so, and it just depends. We'll put it all together and make a little you know list. And that way, and then you change your diet. You take your supplements and change your um, lifestyle. And you can reverse heart disease. You because can. we've actually seen quite, you know, years and years ago, uh, we started, we kind of had ideas about this, mm -hmm. you know, okay, we'd been done doing some work with people, various people, but we had a gentleman come in with a carotid artery in the neck that was highly stenosed. They suggested surgery. He didn't want to do that. He had had a sibling, a sister, I think it was, that had that. They did the surgery and she had a stroke. It's a consequence of the surgery. It's just part of the, part of the surgery process. But that's a possibility. So we put him on this same kind of program. Mm -hmm. We started him out and we looked at everything like his vitamin D level so we could get that in good shape. Uh, we also added the K2, which is really big, the MK7. Yeah. We put him on the natokinase, vitamin C to help the healing the process. The liposomal C, that yeah, makes yeah, a big yeah, difference. Yeah, yeah, big difference. But we put him on all this stuff and then we watched him. And, and over every six months he would have a new ultrasound done on his carotid. And within a year and a half, now, yeah, that sounds like a long time, but hey, if it took 60, 70 years to get that way, a year and a half is pretty quick to get it turned around. So when we looked at him over that next year and a half, it went from severe to mild. And at the, at the year and a half mark, he said, what do I do now? It's down to mild. I said, keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Don't change a thing. And he since did. him, we've had many of them. Oh, him. yeah. But here's because um, we started years, saying you can reverse this, yeah, and because that was a while back, and he we, he still comes in. It's been years, he, years and years and years, and he's he still actually, alive. He actually, yeah, he did. Yeah. He is. He actually did a five year follow up, and at five years, you can't get any better words than this medically. N A D, no abnormality detected. It's completely clean. And we've had many of those, even um, one of our local guys that does, you know, ultrasounds. He does the carotids. Right. He can't believe the difference in our patients. He says, they've told me you can't do this. You know, we've been told as ultrasound techs, you can't reverse what's there. You can just keep, maybe keep it from getting worse with drugs. And I'm like, no, we have seen it over and over and over. And yep. so we really have seen, and we, we've had even more, one other guy a long time ago, real quick. I mean, he he would have never come to us had he not fell through the cracks. Yeah, um, he actually went and did some tests, went and did a stress test, went and did all these tests. Well, he didn't hear from them. And he was having all kind of problems. Couldn't breathe, couldn't hardly walk, couldn't do nothing. Well, they didn't call him. So he was like, oh, I guess I'm okay. Well, about six to eight weeks after all the testing, they called him and said, you need no, to come. He called them. Well, one, something happened. He called and then them. when they called, they said, you need to go to the emergency room. He was like, what do you mean? The tests I did were six weeks ago. And they said, oh, well, you can die at any minute. You need to come have a quadruple bypass right now. And he was like, I don't think so. He said, why didn't you call me immediately? And they said, well, you must have fell through the cracks. Well, he said he decided, well, I've obviously lived this six weeks like this. I'm going to find a way to do it without that. So this was probably 20 something years ago. It was ago. over 20 years. This was ago. a long time ago. And he and this man, he he took a lot of stuff because he was it was at the point where he was desperate. And he actually completely reversed. And he ended up he had congestive heart failure and he had blockages and he hit everything. And he in the end was exercising three hours a day. He so he and at first he couldn't exercise like that because he was too bad. He but he walk. started doing what he could. He started doing a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And taking all the supplements, reversing the plaque, and in the end, he was totally fine. 
Yeah, they did. Mm -hmm. uh, they did. Uh, they, 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 they did all the testing all over again. They made him go have extra tests because they said the <laughs> tests must be wrong. Yeah. They said there's no way that you could have been like this and now you're like this. So they made him go have. We need an advanced scans because there's no way that this can be. Well, the advanced scans showed the same thing. So and it took a while. Like he said earlier, it's not in a month, and it's not in a week for sure. So people are not going to do something and have a difference in a week. Now, if you fix, start taking nutrients that you're lacking, you might feel better. But it's going to take long term in order to reverse heart disease. Right. And talking if it's a young person out there watching and you have it in your family, start young. Start doing the lab work. Start seeing if you have the risk factors and fix them before you cause the problem. Yeah, because That's what we preach constantly is prevention. Because what they found in the research, mm -hmm. and this is kind of interesting. If you're 20s, in your 20s, 21, so whatever, uh, they found that those people are starting to build blockages in their 20s if they have the high risk factors, especially mm -hmm. high homocysteine, things like that. When you do that, you're not going to see a symptom from it for, say, 20 years, maybe 30. Mm -hmm. But when and that 30 years happens, you're going to be the one that says walking along and all of a sudden drops over dead. That's what happens to a lot of those people. So if you start young, if you say in your 20s, check and see if you have those risk factors. If you do, start fixing them. You can prevent mm -hmm. that down the road. That's the key to the whole yep. thing. We want you to be healthy. Yeah. And we do have a panel called the Super Cardiac Panel. Yes. And every test that we've mentioned is and on more. that panel. And more. Yeah. It actually does all your basics. So it does do thyroid because thyroid plays a huge role in cholesterol and particles. Yes. People don't realize that. So if your thyroid gets low, it affects the cardiovascular risk as well. Right. And then high thyroid can just make your heart r race away. So that's actually another risk factor. So it does thyroid. It does stress hormone. Stress plays a big role in everything. It does check your NM NMR, your oxidized LDL. It does the omega check. It does the C-reactive protein, homocysteine. It does your basics, your kidney function, liver function, your electrolytes. You know, so it does all that. It does your A1C, your insulin, it does your analysis. So it does check a whole health, which is what we always say. You don't want to treat one part. Your body is a whole. You have to get healthy as a whole. You can't just treat one area. Right. So that is, if you want to, if you have any questions about that, you can just give us a call. Um, we can do it in most states, not all. So that's when you just give us a call and we will tell you if you're one of the ones that we can do it for. Yeah. And, and you can take that first step. That's the first step. Mm -hmm. Just do that big test. And if you've, especially if you've been told that, well, you know, you, it looks like you're, you're having some cardiovascular symptoms or whatever, you, you really need to get serious about it at that point in time. Uh, so just give us a call. We can kind of get you. So, because the, typically the only place you're going to get something like this, Cleveland Clinic or somewhere, one of those big heart institutes. And even then, a lot of times insurance doesn't want to pay for it, so you're kind of on your own. We make it as affordable as we possibly can. I think that test is three ninety five. Three ninety five, yeah, yeah, three ninety five. And I, at three ninety five, I mean, I've I've seen them charge three ninety five for some pretty basic lab work at, at these mm -hmm. places. So for three ninety five, you get the complete works, so to speak, and you'll you'll know your, all your risk factors. You know what you have to change, mm -hmm. and then we'll help you with. How do you change yep. it? And if you do know you have cardiovascular disease and you say, oh, well, I've already been in and I've already got stents, I'm good. Well, those stents can block back up. So if you don't change the underlying problems, you really aren't getting rid of the problem. That's true. So you really still, if you know you have it, you're at bigger risk because you've already had the issue. So that's another group of people that I said. So really, even the young people, we have a lot of young people nowadays doing it because they're like, I'm going to do something before I have these problems, especially if it runs in their family. Exactly. Exactly. All right, so you know what to do now? Yes, natokinase is a big part of it. But we'll tell you all the other parts, too. So give us a call, email, whatever. Uh, we're here, and we're on YouTube with this. And I think very much so. If you would, if you like this video, hit that like button down there. And, and be, be sure and subscribe, too. And hit the little bell. That will notify you when we get a new video up. So in the meantime, let's start taking care of ourselves a little bit better. I'm Dr. Fox, and I want to thank you for watching this YouTube video. Be sure and hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell, so you'll be notified on any upcoming videos that we have coming up. And thank you again for watching our YouTube videos.